Hello, Business 270 Business Statistics students. This is Professor Hassey. This is our week two lecture video for the week, a little bit longer week this week. Um, today, <clears throat> today, Monday, August 29th till Tuesday, September 6th. And the reason for that is, is because it's Labor Day weekend. So I'm giving you an extra couple of days to the week, thinking that some of you might be traveling or have some family uh, events this coming weekend, the last weekend or holiday weekend of the summer. Also, it's supposed to be hotter than blue blazes this weekend. Uh, so I'm giving you a couple extra days. So our week goes from August 29th, this week number two, to Tuesday, September 6th. And on September 6th, your case study one will be due, and we'll talk about that this evening. That's your first major grade of the course. Uh, worth 10% of your course grade, leading to your midterm examination. Yes, week three, a midterm. It's the way the calendar worked out this year. So that's the way it is. So uh, we'll talk more about that next week and then our Friday update video at the end of this week too. But tonight our topic is the review of chapters one through four of last week and uh, chapter five, probabilities. What are the likelihoods that certain events will happen? A very important concept in the study of statistics and business statistics. So uh, a couple of things to review tonight. We'll be looking at case study number one. We'll be review, which includes three questions, one from chapter one, one from chapter three, and one from chapter five that you'll need to review. So let's get into it and we we'll hope everybody is doing well this second week of our course. A couple of things to note uh, in your Blackboard and I see that all of you have uh, gone to your Blackboard site in the last week and appreciate that. We now have 24 students, excuse me, 20, 23 students in our class and uh, all from wide ranging parts of the world in Southern California. And I welcome you all. One thing you notice, there's now a grade in your report card section on the first page of your Blackboard. I have posted your work or your grade for your bios and your discussions post of this past week. Thank you very much. That aids me greatly in uh, understanding your backgrounds and where you come from. It also refreshes my memory about some former students that I've had. And it's good to have you back in our class. So uh, all the grades for the discussion forum and my comments have been posted. And you will see your grade in the report card section. And we're all off to a very good start because everybody got 100 because you did a fine job in posting your work and telling me a little bit about yourself. So our grades have now begun. Your second grade in, your, in the course is this week, which is case study number one. And that's an important part of our course. Another couple of things to note in your Blackboard, if you go to the Zoom and YouTube links, uh, there's the history of our first two videos in our of our class, lecture one and the update video. There'll be two more this week, tonight's video and the update video at the end of this week on Friday. So just note that that's where those videos can be located. Another area of uh, point of view is now you have a case study and papers file folder in your Blackboard. You click on that and there's the work to be done this coming week. I've given you two files. It's both the same work. Uh, one's a PDF and one is a Word doc. And it's a case study asking you three questions from our material of these first two weeks. And notes what it says. <clears throat> case study work requires internet research as well as using your text or Blackboard materials. Please provide a reference listing at the end of your casework. In other words, at the end of your work, uh, and you answer the three questions, uh, please provide like a reference. Where did you get your data to do the work? Was it the textbook? Was it uh, a video? Was it someplace on the internet? Uh, naturally, question number one is going to be internet research because you have to find a source. So again, always tell me at the end of your work, especially in case studies and papers, you tell me where you received your information to do 
your work and it's called a reference page. Don't forget that. If you don't post that, you'll get 10 points off of your work and you go from an A to an A minus right off the bat. So don't forget to post your references. And then you post your file folder to this file folder and make sure you have your name on it. I will review it uh, ne next week and post the grade immediately and return the file back to you in your grade center. That's how all this works. And we'll look at the specific questions in the case in just a few minutes. So again, this is week two. Our subject is probability. Here's a very nice eight minute video that explains probability. I strongly urge you to listen and review that video. Remember the videos for all, the, all our class weeks are either in the appropriate week that they're included or also all together in our YouTube playlist. And we have a YouTube playlist where all the videos are located and you can go to one fell swoop and take a look at them. And this one, I strongly urge you to look at about probability. And then some interesting class notes, PowerPoint, and we'll talk about these this evening. So you're beginning to see the flow of our class throughout this uh, eight week session. We have a beginning video at the beginning of the week that's going to redo or talk about the material, introduce any assignments that need to be done, and then we'll review that work in a follow up video at the end of the week. This week, I'll do a little bit more work about the case study. I'll show a little bit more examples of probability and examples of our first two weeks work, and then you complete the work. And again, this week is a special week because of Labor Day. Our class work is not due on Sunday as in usual weeks. It is due on Tuesday to make, to make sure and, and give you a little bit of advantage because of the holiday weekend. So you get an extra couple of days this week to post your material. So that means week number three will go from Wednesday, September 7th to a short one, Sunday, September 11th. So week three is a rather short week and that is a midterm week. And so you'll have a less amount of time to do your midterm, but the midterm is only about 10 questions anyway. So that shouldn't make much of a difference. Now, I had some questions this past week from some students about where to find material and get to know Blackboard. Remember, we highlighted this in our first week of our class. Take some time to get to know the material before you start finding some things. In other words, know the flow, where things are within the, the Blackboard platform. That's important. Then when you become familiar with that, you'll know where to look for a specific set of information. For example, uh, last week we covered four chapters in one week. Now naturally we didn't cover all the chapters, but I did give you some sample review problems to take a look at. Well, if you go to week number one, you'll see problem review and solutions. Notice the entire four chapter problems are in this PDF file, file folder. The entire chapters one through four solutions to those problems are in one file folder. Not So some of you were confused about where to find the problems, especially if you didn't have a textbook, and also where the solutions to those problems are. Since week one was an entire four chapters, it's all in two separate files, the problems and then the solutions. So make sure you note that. Please, before also you begin your week work, look at the videos, look at the lecture videos, look at the update videos. They give you a lot of explanation of where things are. And if you do have a problem in finding things or need some answers, remember to go to the week two questions or week one questions last week, and you can post here questions about the material. As you can see, some students did that last week. So if you have questions, you can post that. And also remember, we have office hours every Thursday night from 6 to 9 p.m. on Zoom. Now, this Thursday night, I'm going to be in a tight bind because I have a late afternoon meeting. I probably won't get done till about 7 o'clock. So just so you note, and this will make sure that you're paying attention to the video tonight, that our office hours this coming Thursday, 
uh, August, uh, September 1st will not begin probably until about the 7.30 hour. So please note that if you're planning on coming on and seeing me uh, do that post. Also a couple of extra, a couple extra things. If you go to your Blackboard at the front page and look at the grades and you see a zero, it means I have yet to receive a discussion post from you for last week. Either you forgot about it or are not going to be a member of our class and I don't know about that yet, but make sure if you have yet to post your work last week, you still have time to do that. You will not get an A because of a late posting, but you could get a 90. Uh, an A minus, even though you're late, you can still post your work if you haven't posted that discussion forum last week. Remember the discussion forum was to please post a two to three paragraph introduction of yourself and also explain to me what you think your first impression of statistics is. We had about three or four students who has not posted anything. And as of now, you have a zero for that work. Again, as I explained in week number one, if you're going to be late on an assignment or a posting, I don't have a problem with that whatsoever. Just let me know you're going to be late for that posting and I can anticipate that. If you let me know, you won't get a zero. I'll anticipate your work later on. So this week we have a case study, number one. Case study number one is due Tuesday, September 6th. If forever, whatever reason, and I don't care for the reason, you don't have to tell me, you cannot make the Tuesday, September 6th posting date of that work, let me know. Send me an email. Send me a text. Say, Mr. Hassey, I need a, cup, a day, an extra day to post the work for case one. And that's no problem. You won't lose any points whatsoever. But if you don't let me know you're going to be late on a posting, you'll either get a zero or if you post late, you immediately will get 10 points off for a late posting without notification. So please note that for the future. One of the difficult things, if some of you are new to online studies, is you have to keep to up to date communicating with your professor. If the professor doesn't know what you're doing or you have any problems, he's going to assume you don't care and he's going to keep giving you zeros. That's me. But if you just let me know what your situation is and you, and you can tell me you're gonna need some extra time, I have no problem whatsoever with that. Just let me know. We have a lot of work to pile in to eight weeks. And the more we communicate and the more we're engaged with the course as fast as possible, the better off you all will be in this course. Okay, a couple of key points from our first introductory chapters of last week, just to remind you. And the reason why I'm reminding you is this is the first question on our case study. I'm asking you to go to the internet and give me examples of some statistical work or statistical information. And one of that information is to find two variables. And this is a slide from chapter one. The two variables in statistics are qualitative and quantitative. The qualitative statistic variables have nothing to do with numbers. It could be a color. It could be marital status. It could be what type of car you have. That is a qualitative variable of statistics. Another example of a variable which is more prevalent in statistics is quantitative, and that is numbers. Discrete, continuous different types of numbers and the information they tell us. In question one of the case study, I want you to go to the web, an, an internet website and give me examples of a qualitative statistic and a quantitative statistic. All right, do a little research, no problem. But before you do that, you gotta, gotta understand the definition of those two types of variables. Also, another key component of that analysis is naturally, they ask you for the level of measurement. In other words, you pick a qualitative, a qualitative statistic. What, how are you gonna measure it? Is it nominal measurement, ordinal, 
interval or ratio? What type of measurement are you going to use on that statistical analysis? All right. One of the key things of statistics is to understand what you're trying to find out. Batting average, golf, golf handicap, the, the average temperature in a year, the inflation rate, whatever. And how you find that information is based on what type of variable it is and how, what is the level of measurement you're going to do to tell you something about that variable. That's what I want you to do in question one, is to find a real world example of a qualitative and a quantitative variable, and what would be the level of measurement to determine that statistic, okay? That's question one of the case study, and that's one of the key points of our what is statistics definitions of the first week. Another key point of our first week of study was measurement of data. Describe the tendency of a set of data. Now, what does that mean? In other words, what is the mean, the median, the mode of a set of numbers? The mean is an average. Adding up all the numbers, dividing by the number of numbers, what's the average? The median, what is the midpoint of the numbers? The mode, how many numbers appear more than once and which ones are they? These are ways of describing the tendencies or what numbers tell you. Well, this is from chapter three. And you're going to have to do a median analysis and mode of a mean and a median analysis of a set of numbers in chapter three's question number two problem. What is the average? What is the midpoint? I want you to find that information, and this is taken from chapter three. And you guys all know this from your everyday life. Averages, statistical midpoints are all a part of everyday use in numbers and in business statistics. What is the average? And this is what we practice in that from chapter three. And finally, the uh, number in statistics that we probably use the most, even more than averages, probability, the likelihood that something is going to happen. Now, many of us in California don't get this very often, but if you're from the East Coast of the United States, the South and the Midwest, you have this happen to you every single day when you wake up and you listen to the new news broadcasts. The chances of rain today are 40%. The likelihood of a snowing today is 60%. Every day, the weather forecast gives you the chances of it happening. Rain, snow, sunshine, the probability. And also, a lot of us have to use probability if any of us happen to go to Las Vegas or the racetrack or bet on football games. What is the likelihood that somebody's going to win versus somebody they're playing against? The likelihood of probability of victory. That's a big deal. So probability is a value between zero and one. Inclusive, describing the relative possibility, which is the chance or likelihood that an event will occur. And probability is a big thing. The greater the probability, the more likely that is going to happen, so you need to prepare for it. The less likely the probability of something of going to happen means that you should not prepare for it, but the chances are it happening are very little. And here's a perfect slide from our text. The probability that the sun will disappear this year, probably almost close to zero. The sun's probably going to rise and be here every day. The probability that a slow horse will win the Kentucky, Kentucky Derby, and the name of that horse is Slowpoke, uh, maybe a 20% chance. Not great. The chance of a head of a coin toss is going to be either a head or a tail. Well, that's 50-50. 50% -50. 50 is going to be a head. 50% is going to be a tail. No matter what, it's going to be one of those two things. It's 
the chance of an increase in federal taxes. Uh-oh, 70%. Now, if this was a Democrat in the White House, like President Biden, it'd probably be closer to 90%. But it usually is going to happen. And in the probability of almost one, 100%, the chance of rain this year in Florida. Well, it pretty well rains almost every day in Florida. Why? Because they're close to the ocean, especially during the hurricane time of the season in the fall. There's a great chance of it going to rain. So that's going to be a very high probability. And excuse me, you can probably see my cat on the video here. And her name is Bader, and she's come to visit me while I'm giving this lecture tonight. Hello, Bader. Would you care to say a few words to the audience? Nope, she's not talking tonight. She's a little bit shy. And also statistics isn't her cup of tea either. Okay, that's probability. And in business, it's huge. What's the likelihood we're going to have a great sales year? Well, based on our prior years and based on the situation in the economy, it's 50-50. What's the probability you're going to get an A in business statistics class with Professor Hassey? Well, I'm going to give you that number because I keep track of all this. And the odds of you getting an A are roughly about 65 to 70%. In other words, almost two-thirds of you are going to get an A in this class based on historical review of all the grades I've ever given in this class. About two-thirds of you are going to get an A. That's pretty good. Yeah, but what happens if you're in that other third? What does that mean? So that's the probability that you have to work with in business statistics. So as you can see, probability is a big deal. And this is what chapter five is all about. And you're gonna to have to be doing a quick little calculation problem in your case study about probability. Because probability will lead us into chapter six and other chapters down the road, and it's huge. How to measure if, whether that probability is gonna happen, you do a standard deviation analysis. You determine whether the what's the risk involved in that event happening or not. But let's just keep it simple this week, week three, two. Probability, it's either zero, 10%, 20%, 50%, 80%, 100%. No more, no less. So it's a number between zero and one about the likelihood that something is going to happen. Your job in chapter five is to read the material and figure out, okay, how do I determine that probability? What's the formula to involve in that? That's your job to find out and to study it. And it's all in leadership uh, learning assignment one. Let's bring up the next one. There are three different ways of assigning probability. Classical, empirical, subjective, all right? We're gonna be concentrating mainly on the classical, ways of assigning or determining probability. For example, here's an example of classic probability. A lot of you guys have been to Vegas, ever play the game of craps? You, de you determine and you gamble on what number or what roll of the dice is going to show. A one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. What are the probabilities that you can roll that number in dice? And one of the ways you bet in the game of craps in Las Vegas is you guess, or not guess, you hopefully understand and can see, feel the probabilities of who's ever throwing those dice, what is going to happen. And this is what is called classical probability. See, the reason why Vegas always wins, is they know they have the odds for them. But if sort of on some occasions, when you have the odds with you and the dice are rolling your way and you bet big, you can make a lot of money. But historically speaking, the odds are in Vegas's favor when you roll the dice. And that's an example of classical probability. Empirical, empirical probability is the probability of an event happening as a fraction of the time of similar events happened in the past, okay? In other words, what's the probability it's going to rain tomorrow? 
Well, it hasn't rained in California in I don't know how long. I would think the probability of rain tomorrow in Claremont or Laverne or San Dimas is going to be, if not zero, pretty close to it. Why? Because we've had a trend, we've had a history of no rain. That will add to the probability that we probably won't get rain tomorrow. That's an example of empirical probability. Here's another one. On February 1st, 2003, this is kind of a bummer, the space shuttle Columbia exploded. This was the second disaster in 123 space missions for NASA. On the basis of this information, what is the probability that a future mission is successfully going to be completed? So in mission 124, what's the probability of that being a good one, safe? Two disasters in 123. Well, here we go. First of all, what's the probability of a successful flight? We've had 121 successful flights and two disasters. Well, in other words, that's a 98% historical probability that this is going to be a safe flight. You just don't want to be in that 2% and being an astronaut on those two flights. And not to make light of that, that's not, I'm not trying to be funny, but it does happen. You will every now and then have an accident. But it's the probability is pretty good in the favor of having a successful one because there's been 121 prior missions out of 123. So that's an example of empirical probability. It looks at the past, just like we haven't had rain in California in months. I think that's pretty well an example of it's not going to rain tomorrow. But it could happen, especially if you live in the high desert or in the low desert where the storms come in off the out of the desert or the mountains, sometimes it rains. Southern California and Los Angeles, highly unlikely. But that's what we mean by empirical probability. And finally, subjective probability. The likelihood of a particular event happening that is assigned by an individual based on whatever information is available. In other words, an subjective probability means there's no historical information like successful flights or no rainy days. You subjectively decide whether that is going to occur or not. All right, here's, a, here's some examples. Estimating that the New England Patriots will play in the Super Bowl in this year, this year ahead, 2023. Now, there's not the, the historical data there is how many times have New England Patriots been in the Super Bowl, but that's kind of inconsistent because the Super Bowl is is a tough call. But if you're if you're a New England Patriots fan, you're going to be a little bit more subjective to say, yeah, they're going to be in the they're going to be in the uh, in the Super Bowl, they're a great, they're a great team. I support them. But if you are a common sense fan, and you'd say, you know, without Brady, without an offensive line, I don't think they're going to make the Super Bowl this year. So the probability determination is based on your subjective now knowledge of that test. Text. Here's another one: estimating the likelihood that you will be married before the age of thirty. Well, since this is only you. You're the only one that can decide that one to get married before 30 or afterward. It's kind of subjective. Estimating the likelihood the United States budget deficit will be reduced by half in the next 10 years. Now, if you're a Democrat, you might have one answer. If you're a Republican, you might have another answer. If you're just a commonsensical person who understands the economy, you'll have another answer. Again, the subjectiveness of that answer is based on your experience of knowing about US budget deficit. It has nothing to do with trends or analysis from prior years. It's your subjective probability. So looking back on this, the three types of probability, whoops, going a little bit too fast there, are classical, empirical, and subjective. So these are the two, three areas that you need to concentrate on, but especially concentrate on classical and empirical. 
actually determining the event happening based on similar events of the past. Okay, chapter five. Okay, as we mentioned in week one in our introduction to this class, we have a variety of ways of assessing information in our class. We have uh, a case study like this one here, where it's a series of questions from the material, and you're asked to, to do some research or find the answers. There's papers later on in this class where you I give you a particular analysis or some data, and I'm asking you to interpret that data in a paper. Papers usually run two to five pages. There's examinations like the midterm next week and the final the last week where a series of questions, both short answer and calculation will be given to you. And the, usual, the occasional discussion posts or some homework problems where you're asked to do some specific tasks like you did last week with the discussion post. So different ways of giving me information about your study and ways of studying the material online and to study it by finding the answers in your text and doing some research and then giving me the answers. And this is an example of case one, which is worth 10% of your course grade. It's three questions, one from chapter one, one from chapter three, and one from chapter five. Your job is to find the information, type the answer in the space provided, or just create your own file and answer the questions, and then post it to Blackboard. If you need some additional data to provide, like a spreadsheet, post that file in addition to this work in, your, in the, in the uh, Blackboard, and you give me an, a spreadsheet file just to, as backup or show me how you got some of the answers. It's up to you, all right? If you have questions on this, ask me on Thursday at our at our student hours or just send me an email and I will answer and make sure you understand what the material is all about. Case study work requires internet research as well as you using your text or Blackboard materials or any other materials. Please provide a reference listing at the end of your casework of showing me where you got your information. If it didn't come from inside your brain, you have to list where you got the data for your answers. You provide the format and the forum for your work. In some of the case papers later on in this class, I'll ask you to do some work in maybe a, a spreadsheet format or in a APA format. And we'll talk more about that later. In this case study, you provide the answers however you feel is best of showing me your answers. So question one, as I mentioned a little bit earlier tonight, is on the web, the internet, go to your favorite news source, newspaper, television, CNN, CN, MSNBC, CNBC, uh, uh, Fox, uh, <clears throat> Los Angeles Times, Wall Street Journal, New York. go to a source of information and find examples of each type of variable, a qualitative variable and a quantitative variable, two variables, two examples. Write a brief analysis that lists the variables and describe them in terms of qualitative, quantitative, discrete or continuous, and the level of measurement. We looked at this a little bit earlier and last week. So you should write your answer, this is a qualitative, discrete variable, and I would measure it nominally, ordinary, ratio. How would I measure this work? That's what I'm looking for in that problem. Question number two. The accounting firm of Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe has five senior partners. This week, the senior par partners saw six, four, three, seven, and five clients respectively. Five senior partners, one, one saw six, one, found, uh, one saw four, three, seven, and five. Compute the mean and medium number of clients seen by the partners. What is the average, the mean and the medium 
of the number of clients seen by the partners as a whole. That's number one. Number two is, is the mean a sample mean or a population mean? Explain. Is it a sample mean or a population mean? Explain. Might have to look, look up a little work in chapter three of your textbook. And then finally, a question from chapter five this week. A survey of 37, excuse me, 34 students at Wall College of Business showed the following majors. Accounting 10, finance five, economics three, management six, marketing 10. What is the, based on this information, what is the probability he or she, whoever the major is, is a management major? What's the probability at Wall College of Business that the major is management? And then which concept of probability did you use to make this estimate? Was it empir empirical? Was it subjective? Remember we just talked about that? Was it classical? What concept of probability did you make to make this estimate? Classical, empirical, subjective? And tell me that. All right, should take you about an hour or so to do that, not bad, but it is a holiday weekend. So you have until September 6th to post your work to Blackboard. If you're going to be late, let me know. And at the end of the work, tell me where did you go on the internet to get your news source? Tell me what do, how did you calculate mean and median? You probably went to your textbook. Tell me the sources of your information and probably was the textbook for question three, but tell me the sources of where you found the information to do your answers. That's very important. So that's 10% of your course grade. So at the end of week two, we would you would have 15% of your grade completed thus far, 5% for the discussion post of last week, 10% this week, and then we have 20%, 20, I think 20, 15 or 20, I think it's 15, for the midterm questions of next week. And next week's midterm will cover chapters one through six, and I'll explain that more to you in our Friday video. All right, everybody, that's my video for this week two. We'll have a follow-up video explaining some more specifics of our work this week two, namely probability, on Friday of this coming week two. So again, have a great week, stay cool, begin to look at case one, and we'll see you at the end of this week. Thanks everybody, until next time. Adiós.